technically you are eligible for such positions so but low probability that you will be shortlisted for central colleges i wish you all a very good evening through this video i just want to talk about two aspects uh, which i feel is something that you are confused about or that does bother you the first thing is that what all options are available to you after msc and let's say you qualify the national eligibility test that is a net exam or you qualify the state entrance test okay the state eligibility test um right uh, so what all opportunities open up for you and the second most uh you know sort of debated question um or something that you might be confused about is that if i have an msc and i'm i'm trying to compete with someone who has a phd degree then what all or what are my chances of becoming an assistant professor if i'm competing with someone like that okay so these are the two aspects that we are going to discuss in today's video right so uh, coming to the first uh, part that if you have just qualified msc or like you have just completed your msc and let's say you have qualified the net examination or you have qualified the state eligibility test that is a set exam so every uh, every state or most of the states have their own uh, state eligibility test examination like for example maharashtra has its own karnataka has its own um then uh, you know uh, there might be other states telangana has its own right so uh, some states have their own state eligibility test also but if you have qualified the national eligibility test then a net exam is always considered to be greater than the state entrance test right for obvious reasons because it's a national exam and state examination is relevant to that particular state only now uh, uh, with some examples i want to uh, explain you how things work uh, so there are different permanent positions that you can get either you can get in state colleges okay or state universities then uh, there are assistant professor positions in central colleges and central universities and then you know there are research institutes like csir and um, you know iit icers so i'll talk about how what are the eligibility criteria for each one of them so uh, if i talk about and what are what are your chances as an msc student when compared to a phd so if i talk about the state uh, colleges so every state will have its own assistant professor examinations okay so it's like a competitive exam like you have net exam or you have the set examination where you know uh, there's a examination there, there's a objective type uh, questions and then you answer that and you score certain marks so similarly for each and every um, state uh, for the state colleges there are assistant professor vacancies and that are fulfilled by the various assistant professor uh, examinations that are relevant to that particular state so for example karnataka in on 30th of uh, last 30th of september last year basically came up with this notification for assistant professor positions and uh, there there are there are uh, you know positions from humanities from commerce from social sciences basically and from sciences also and if you look at the eligibility criteria so if you focus over here so the eligibility criteria is that you should have a masters degree with 55% marks okay so that is quite uh, uh, self explanatory uh, apart from that it is saying that you should have either the ugc ca or csi net okay depending upon like if you are from science science background then you have to qualify csi net otherwise ugc net um, or you should have qualified kset so either one of them either you have qualified the karnataka state eligibility test or you have qualified the csi net or the ugc net if you have not qualified the net examination then you have you can also have an exemption if you have done phd so if you are someone who has done phd according to the ugc regulations and the ugc regulations de demand that these five criteria are fulfilled so if you have done if you have done a uh, your phd in accordance with these five criteria basically uh, in accordance with the ugc criteria then you are exempt that even if you have not qualified net or the set examination that is okay you are still eligible so these are the only two eligibility criteria now you might question that doesn't state have its own quota or or you, whether you should be a resident of that particular state or whether you should have domicile in that particular state they, basically there's a domicile certificate which basically proves that you are a uh, 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 like you you are a resident of that particular state or you have resided in that state for a particular period of time 
so uh, in this case uh, for the karnataka state entrance test uh, or for the karnataka assistant, assistant professor test sorry um there is no such eligibility that means even if you are from some other state let's say you are from west bengal or or assam or uh, you know gujarat wherever you are from um you are still eligible to apply uh, for this particular assistant professor jobs right so that is the autonomy of the state the state can decide whether they want to have a quota or uh, for you know the 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 residents of the state or not so so for every assistant professor position in each and every state the eligibility criteria might be different and i'll show you how so uh, anyway so if you look at the the examination over here so you have these uh, four papers so one is english which carries 100 marks then you have general knowledge which carries 50 marks and then the subject or uh, your subject specific so let's say we are talking about chemistry over here so 250 marks for the chemistry and rest 250 marks uh, is divided into general knowledge english and you can see and you can see kannada also so over here they have not put in place a a a, a eligibility criteria of domicile that whether you uh, whether you reside in karnataka or not but you can see through the competitive examination they have given 100 marks to the you know the language the the state language so so you have to know that uh, so it, you know only if you know this you you will be you know able to uh, qualify for the exam because uh, there is a minimum qualification like you need to score at least 30 40 marks so let's say even if you score 250 on 250 in chemistry it does not matter if you are not able to uh, score the minimum eligibility uh, in this particular exam so it might be 30 or 40 marks uh, that depends i i have not gone through the complete advertisement so over here they have not put a eligibility criteria of domicile but then you can see in the examination itself they have put in 100 marks uh, last year up also uh, uttar pradesh basically also came up with its own assistant professor examination and over there in the eligibility criteria itself they had mentioned that the domicile um, needs to be from up that you need to be a resident of uttar pradesh your domicile has to be from like you know belongs to you should belong to uttar pradesh basically um so over there they had specifically mentioned that so you are only eligible so you are not even allowed to give the examination if you belong to some other state um and over there the, the examination was broken down into 200 marks so 140 marks were for the uh, subject specific exam so let's say if you are applying for chemistry then 140 marks was for, for chemistry and 60 marks was for um you know for general aptitude so you can understand that every state has its own criteria of having its uh, examination for assistant professor so it varies from state to state for some states you might be eligible even though you do not belong to that state but then most pro probably they will have a paper wherein uh, you know the state's local language would be also uh, you know basically be scored upon right uh, apart from so this is about the state uh colleges basically if you want to become a ass assistant professor in state colleges on a permanent basis um one thing is that over here uh if you are competing with a phd student it does not matter because if you see over here it all depends upon your score in the competitive examination so just like a net exam this is also going to be a co competitive examination so your phd degree over here is not going to play any role so even if you are a msc student and you are applying for this exam you have a very high probability if you score well uh, you know that you will be selected for the assistant professor position so for example in uttar pradesh 200 marks is given to the uh, examination and 30 marks is only given to the interview so even if you don't do very well in the interview but you you do very well in the competitive competitive examination yet you will be very high in the merit right so it all depends on how you do in the competitive exam so over here the phd uh, if you are competing with a phd aspirant or a phd uh, or phd holder basically it will not make much of a difference right but let's go to some central colleges so for example uh, let's take a recent vacancy um posted in hansraj college okay so over here if i focus on the chemistry uh, so there is there are three positions and uh, let's say for like for the general category on the uh, or the unreserved category there are there is only one position now for central colleges like for example hansraj college which is very very popular and affiliated to delhi university um The, the the there is a very different way of uh, shortlisting candidates so like for state colleges there was a competitive examination over here there is no competitive examination here you are first shortlisted based on a score and how that score is decided i will just let you know so you are basically uh, uh, evaluated based on a score uh, or shortlisted based on a score for the position and once you have been shortlisted then an interview happens and the 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 
the like basically you will be only selected on how you perform in the interview so shortlisting happens based on a score but once you are shortlisted your shortlisted score does not matter like for example in the up examination that like i just uh, talked about you have 200 marks for the competitive exam and 30 marks for the interview but over here once you are shortlisted based on a certain score uh after that it does not matter what your score was then how you perform in the interview will decide whether you get selected or not okay now let's look how the score is decided and this is where a msc student will be highly disadvantaged okay so let me show you the score over here so eligibility criteria somewhat remains the same that you should have a masters degree with 55% marks um over here your net qualification should be there your here your state entrance test if you have qualified that will not work you need to qualify net or if you have not qualified net then the same thing applies over here either you have to uh, basically you have done a phd degree uh, you can see over here it is mentioned Uh, that you are exempted from this national eligibility test requirement if you have done a phd uh, which is in regulation to the 2009 or 2016 uh, ugc regulations on a phd degree and these five criteria should be satisfied okay uh, now let's go to the scoring criteria so see why i'm why i'm saying you are disadvantaged So let's take the highest score in each each one of the category. So let's say in your bachelor's you got above eighty percent, so you got twenty one marks from there. In your master's, that is post graduation, also let's say you got twenty five marks, so that that makes it forty six. Um, then let's say uh, you you qualified net with GRF, so that means ten marks more, fifty six. uh now in msc publishing three research articles is very difficult so for each research publication you get two marks. Okay, so let's say over here uh. you 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 are able to publish let's assume that you published three articles also and you got six marks from from there so that makes it uh your 56 and then 662 okay and let's say even after msc you have not done phd but you have some teaching experience you you taught in some government college or you you did you know you you taught in some government college so you got 10 marks from there okay so you got 72 score and let's say you were given a international or a national award and even a state level award so let's say you got some state level award so that makes it 5 marks more so that still makes it 77 so your score comes out to be 77 now let's say if someone who has done a phd and uh, is a average phd like he has done average okay not not something great how much are they going to score so let's say they got somewhere between 60 to 80% which is like you know just first division so 19 marks from there then 23 from here so that makes it 42 uh then let's say they did not qualify jrf okay so let's say just they did phd so 25 marks are there for phd so that makes it 67 let's say they did not qualify jrf they just did net okay that's why i'm saying an average phd so 75 then in phd three publications is not a big deal so six marks from here 81 and let's say they don't have any teaching experience or postdoc experience and they have not they don't have any international or national like state or national award so still their score is 81 so you have done you have you have basically scored high in every um case and i am taking an exception that you have uh, you know published three articles then you have the state award and the national award and you also have the teaching experience so 10 marks from the teaching experience till you you come down to 77 whereas a very average phd who does not have any teaching experience um and has not won any award state award or national award um and even has not qualified grf also still scores 81 so here you are highly disadvantaged so you there's a very very low probability uh, that you will be shortlisted for such positions so even though technically you are eligible for such positions okay uh, but uh, i mean there's a very very low probability that you will be shortlisted for central colleges okay so so that is something that i wanted to make clear so in state colleges like there is a competitive examination so over there it does not matter if you are competing with a phd but for central colleges it will matter a lot okay um and if i talk about research institutes or or you know iits or icers so i just wanted to share with you that for iits and icers for example this is a position from iit bhilai so you can see over here the minimum criteria is that you should have a phd so over here definitely for research institutes um you know you are you are not eligible for research institute iits icers basically which which um are 
heavily invested in research apart from teaching there you will definitely not be eligible if you just have an msc even though they mention that the eligibility criteria is just phd uh, but honestly speaking you need to have 2 to 3 years of postdoc experience minimum or at least uh, you know um, have some kind of research scientist like, like you should be holding a research scientist position in the industry to be even considered for these positions so technically on paper you just need to have a phd but uh, generally you need to have at least some postdoc experience or uh, experience as a research scientist in in the industry to be considered for these positions all right so anyway i, I hope uh, that i was able to clear some of your doubts uh, related to this particular topic um if you like this video please do give it a big thumbs up if you like the content that, that i make uh, please subscribe to the channel as well and yeah that's about it thank you for watching i'll see you in the next video very soon hey guys so i'm a verified educator on an academy and along with that i'm also available on the unacademy plus platform where i'm taking live classes along with other educators so in case you're interested in attending the live classes you can subscribe to the unacademy plus platform using my referral code that is SETHI SETI and that will give you 10% discount all right and in case you're not interested in attending the live classes you can watch the free courses that are available on the unacademy for that all you need to do is go to the unacademy website or download the unacademy learning app and search my name over there that is ACT once you do that you will get the access to all the free courses that are available on the unacademy platform all right